Perfect. Well, uh, Nick and others who are viewing at a later date, uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, head coach Eric Largen, after four years as the head coach of the Alaska Nanooks hockey team, has uh, agreed to an extension for another four years that'll keep him here through 2025, 2026. Um, joining us alongside Coach Largen is our director of athletics, Brock Annenson. Um, we're going to open with a statement from Brock, and then we'll open up the uh, first statement from Coach Largen, and then we'll open up for questions following that. So, Brock, if you want to start it off, we will uh, we'll give you the floor. Sure, yeah. Thanks, Nate. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just start um, kind of with what uh, our release touched on a little bit. It's it's certainly a, you know, a fantastic uh, day and opportunity for, for UAF hockey as, as you know, we had announced Coach Largent's contract just recently. Um, you know, we talked about the fact that he's a proven leader for the program. Um, the student athletes uh, certainly look to him, um, not just our hockey uh, players, but also, you know, around the department, um, our administrators, our staff, our, our, our coaches, um, specifically the program has continued to uh, really excel and compete with top ranked teams in the country. Um, you know, you, you mentioned it in the release, you know, if we bring in big teams around the country, uh, we travel to them, you know, we continue that, uh, that positive relationship um, with Eric at the helm and continuing to build out those uh, strong partnerships and, and a strong strength of schedule. I think that uh, championship culture is really in place uh, here in Fairbanks. So um, I'm excited uh, for the next four years and, and, and beyond and, 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 we're excited for next year with a lot of a lot of new faces and some returning faces that have have kind of developed the framework to to really a, a big time program. Perfect, Largy. We'll go over to you. Okay. Yeah. I just I just like to start off by just you know saying thanks, saying thanks to Chancellor White, to to Brock for you know trusting in in leading the program, and obviously I'm excited about it. Just you know, being from here, having played here, now being able to work here the last six years, I just think there's a lot of positive things that are happening within the department and the, you know, campus community as a whole. And I'm excited to be a part of that, excited that I got uh, entrusted to lead the, the program for another four years. I think, you know, we're making positive steps in the right direction of the program, but still a lot of work to be done and uh, looking forward to the next four years. And being able to have some some major accomplishments and goals uh, through our program, and I know the players that are here, the student athletes that are here, are, are looking forward to uh, you know uh, maintaining a high standard as well as trying to reach uh, reach some new ones with uh, you know some some pretty high goals and expectations. Perfect, thanks, Largy. Uh, Nick, they're both open for questions, and it's uh, it's all you from here on. Um, we'll start with uh, Largy. Obviously, it'll be a little bit more of a clearer picture for your next four years rather than your first four, whether that was COVID or going independent. Um, you know, just what is it uh, going to look like for you just with this clearer, clearer picture of uh, leading the Nanooks in an independent, as an independent D1 school with playing teams like Arizona State? We saw them last year. You'll see them again this year, LIU in that mix too. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's a good opportunity for our group. I think it's it's good for me, too, just to be able to know more of the direction that we're going. I think with the stability that, you know, Brock has brought on board and his staff and team and, you know, knowing the support that we have throughout the university from the president to the chancellor uh, all the way on down, you know, I think it gives a clear direction and, and you know, uh, goals for our program. And, you know, I think for us, you know, we want to, you know, be able to achieve far past what we've even been able to do over the last, you know, four years and, you know, get the program back to, you know, fighting for making the tournament and getting into the tournament and, you know, maintaining the high standards of, uh, you know, community service and, you know, academics that we've always had too. So I think, I think there's some lofty goals ahead, but I think we have the right, you know, staff around it. I think we have the right support and, you know, I think we have the right student athletes to be able to try to work to help achieve those goals. And Brock, obviously, Coach Largen just mentioned uh, the things off the rink, the, the academic and the public uh, service. You know, how, how do you see that at work with the Nanox men's hockey team year in, year out since you've been here? Yeah, I mean, and I can I can specifically speak to last year as uh you know, the outreach in a, in a tough time, you know, within the pandemic of, 
you know, trying to do a lot of community outreach, but, you know, you start in the classroom and you talk about uh, really high achieving athletes that um, I think boasted a 3.7 plus GPA um, over the year. And um, that carried into the community of, um, you know, some welcome back to school events and, and getting in the community as much as possible. But that outreach uh, to the community um, stems to our sponsors, our donors, um, our, our booster clubs, um, you know, skate with the nooks, uh, getting on the ice with kids in the community. Um, and that's one thing we want to continue. And I think that Eric really embraces that. His, his players really embrace it and his coaching staff. Um, and it's something that we're going to try to continue to enhance uh, for the upcoming year. Um, and I, I just think that'll continue to grow our crowd. Um, you know, you look at wins and losses, you look at opponents we're playing. Uh, but if, if we can continue to keep people excited um, alongside Eric and what he's developing, I think that uh, the sky's the limit. And then uh, Coach Largen, obviously this, this doesn't happen overnight. Um, what was this process kind of like in terms of restructuring and, and renegotiating another contract? Yeah, I mean, for me, it wasn't very difficult. I mean, as long as uh, Brock and his team wanted me, I wanted to stay. So, so it's like I said, it's, it's home for us. And then there's still, you know, you get to a point too where uh, maybe you've achieved everything that you wanted or you've learned everything that you can at a certain spot and it's time to move on. For me, that hasn't been the case. Like, um, you know, I, I, I want to make the tournament. I want to see us into a conference. Um, you know, those are goals that I have just personally that as the leader of the program that I want to see us achieve. And so until those types of things are complete, I'm going to feel like there's some, you know, unfinished business or some things that need to be taken care of here. And uh, like I said, I think we're heading in the right direction. It's definitely going to be a, you know, a tough hill to climb, but you know, those couple things specifically, like I'd like to see before being done here. So there's no, no reason for me to leave the supports there. And, uh, you know, my family's from here. We love it here and we're a part of the community and, um, you know, we want to be able to keep leading the program and having to go in the right direction. And you talk about going in the right direction. Uh, you know, you kind of had some cards stacked against you coming off of COVID, a very, very young team. Uh, started off with a split against Clarks and the rest of the first half wasn't that great. Um, but then it really turned around at RPI into the second half of the season. And you guys uh, put together some really, really good weeks of college hockey. How do you build on that and keep that second half into uh, going into this next season? And then obviously, like you said, in the long term uh, for the years to come. Yeah. I mean, I think it, I mean, it really, it just starts with the players in the locker room and the belief and, you know, talking to guys throughout the course of the summer, like they, they believe that uh, the best hockey is yet to come for, for themselves in the program. So that's the exciting piece. I think their expectations are very high. I think they're going to be disappointed if they're not flirting around trying to make the tournament next year. So with that, it's not a lot of work from the coaching staff. I mean, we're just going to guide that and, you know, try to uh, try to support them the best that we can. But I think the mentality is there. Um, you know, I think we have the right, the right people in the locker room and that's the most important thing. And, you know, from there, you, you know, it's hockey and you never know exactly what's going to happen through the course of a season. But I think, you know, overall, I think there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm and excitement. And uh, I think we have the right mix of players to, uh, you know, to be able to make a, you know, a good push this season. And then this one would be for both. Um, we can start with Brock and then go to Coach Largen, um, you know, Coach Largen kind of hinted at one of his goals before uh, his tenure comes to an end at UAF would be finding themselves back in a college hockey conference. Is there any kind of lead as to a specific place at the time or where you guys are, are aiming? Yeah, I don't think that there's a specific aim. I think the goal is to, to simply just approach um, you know, all the players, uh, especially the independents, some of the new ones, obviously, um, our, our close partner UAA and trying to ensure that we solidify a good landing spot that fits not just for us, but for, for that conference as well. Um, Eric has done a great job of reaching out to, to a lot of the coaches that are, uh, you know, in and out of conferences to, to assess, you know, where they sit. Um, we're building our relationships. Um, you know, you see uh, Arizona State and Long Island on our schedule you know, four games uh, year in and year out. 
um, and adding Lyndon Wood here, who's a new independent. Um, so we're, we're really building those relationships, um, you know, with the new commissioner starting in the NCHC, we're, you know, working towards, you know, talking a little bit more with them as we had in the past. And so it's really a, kind of a hurry up and wait for, for both Eric and I in the program as we, you know, we, we just try to continue to position ourselves um, with our offerings, you know, obviously our competitive schedule, um, our players, our, our win-loss record, but also our game day experience and, and what we provide, you know, to the people who come to the games. Um, and, and from there, um, hopefully all things will take care of themselves. That's probably the number one question that I get asked around <laughs> around the town and then the hockey community. But I think I think the the big thing is there is progress being made and, and maybe it's not towards a specific conference. But I think the biggest thing is making sure that your own house is in order. And so that is what Brock and his team and the chancellor and the university has done. Like there's support through the athletic department as well as through our hockey program. And then some of the things that Brock touched on continuing to enhance the program, uh, being a value add to a conference. I think we have a lot to be able to offer. And so now it's a matter of just when that timing is going to occur and where that place is going to be. And we don't have the crystal ball for it, but I think what we're doing internally will allow for when there is a shakeup and whenever this NCAA transformation happens over the next year to two years, we're going to be a spot where conferences are going to look to us and our program and say, we want Fairbanks into it. We feel like they're going to add value to, to our conference and, and our student athletes. And so I think Brock and his team has done a really good job. And obviously we have to continue with elevating our game on the ice and making sure that we're a competitive program. And, you know, I think as long as we do that, I think we're going to be in a good spot when that, uh, you know, shakeup occurs, which it inevitably will happen over the next few years. And then I think the last question I have uh, for Coach Largen, um, you know, it seems like when the, you know, college students come back to campus, they're all excited to be back with their buddies, be back on the ice. Uh, but you also kind of get this now, too, uh, not only because you get your players back, but you're also uh, under another four years. Just, uh, you know, what's it going to be like taking the ice with the team this year, that first day, just because, uh, you know, you're, you're going to be here for another four years? Yeah, I mean, I love to say it's going to be very different, but it probably won't. We're just, you know, it's excited. It doesn't matter if, uh, you know, what type of contract you're on or anything else or who you're really even coaching. I mean, just being on the ice and being able to partake in the game is a huge, you know, it's a huge blessing and it's awesome. So uh, there's a lot of excitement on that, you know, first day, first couple of days of practice and things like that. And I think the nice thing this year is that the players are going to make it really easy to come to the rink because they're, high achievers they want to be able to get the most out of that time and very coachable and so I think it's going to be a great a great experience and looking forward to getting at the Patty Center and the Carlson Center in front of the Fairbanks fans this year.